Hey everybody, sorry for not uploading a video in a while, but today I want to talk about the iPhone 6 in 2019, where it stands. Basically, this is Apple's smartphone released in September of 2014, so going on five years old now, um, but it is their most popular phone ever released, still to this day, and it is also the thinnest iPhone uh, it's under seven millimeters thin and it is still running the latest version of ios which is ios 12.2 so how does it fare in early 2019 let's find out so the design of the iphone 6 here is not bad of course every iphone to date has had a great design um this one's a little different you know it's got the antenna bands on the top and bottom uh the camera isn't perfectly in the corner you know, but it's still a good looking phone. It's thin and it's got the rounded corners, you know, the rounded glass. Um, feels really nice. Came in three colors, the silver, the space gray, and the gold. We have the space gray here. Uh, of course, the silver and gold come with a white front here and the space gray has black. So it also has the Touch ID first generation fingerprint scanner, which, is not as fast as the second generation, but it is still very fast and reliable. And I would even go as far to say that it is more reliable and faster than Face ID. You can see it hits every time. You don't have to keep your finger on the scanner for long at all. Um, but it's not like the iPhone 6s and later where you can just press the button and you're good. You have to hold it for a uh, half second. Um, so yeah, the display is the Retina display, 326 pixels per inch. Of course, you got a 750 by 1334 resolution. It's the same screen on the 6S. That one just has 3D touch. This one does not, of course. But with iOS 12, you do get some of the 3D touch features um, without actually having the hardware. So for example, you can hold down the space bar to have that trackpad feature. Um, you can even clear all your notifications by long pressing on the X there things like that. So iOS 12 is definitely improving the experience here for the older devices, especially in terms of performance. You know, they did a great job with this one. In every way is better than iOS 11. Um, it's pretty similar to even iOS 10, which is impressive. This iPhone packs the Apple A8 CPU clocked at 1.4 gigahertz with one gigabyte of RAM. And that is probably the biggest thing that is limiting this phone is only having one gigabyte of RAM. You know, the multitasking is not very good on this phone and it, you're gonna have to be reloading a lot of apps. The performance is better than you'd expect from a phone of this age, and definitely from other manufacturers. You know, Android phones definitely slow down over time, even though they don't get nearly the software support that iPhones do, um, which is kind of ironic. They slow down more and they're not getting software updates, whereas iPhones maintain their performance better and they get updates for five, even six years, which is impressive. So iOS 12 could be the last major software version that this phone receives, but at least they'd be leaving it off on a good note. You've got good performance and stability. It's only gonna get better from here. Just to show you some of the areas where the iPhone 6 lags behind, for example, if we load Snapchat, it takes a pretty long time to load, and once you get into it, it's a little choppy. So you can see, it takes a little longer there. That wasn't too bad. You can see there's a little bit of a lag as you're swiping through the pages. Um, oh, I have to log back in. Let's do that real quick. You also have Touch ID for the password authentication. So getting in, you can see there are some stutters here and there. This is actually more smooth than what I remember from last time. So it looks like maybe Snapchat is making some improvements here, but you can see definitely loading the snap map, a little bit of a stutter there. And if we go into memories, so yeah, it's not as bad as it was even a few weeks ago. So there's Snapchat. Um, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of a slower experience, but it's what you'd expect from a phone of this age. But you can see definitely loading the standard Apple apps is pretty snappy. Um, there's camera as you saw, photos, settings, you know, not too bad here. Um, here's the app store. So yeah, now all of this performance is assuming that you have a battery that is in good condition. Now these phones are rather old at this point. If you're buying it used and the battery's never been replaced, you have mixed results. 
Um, the batteries do degrade over time, and as they degrade, Apple will start to slow down the performance. So you can see that this one is still at 100%. Um, you can get your battery replaced for only $49. You know, last year, 2018, it was $29 to do that. And they've brought it back up by $20. But it used to be, I think, $79. $69 or $79 before 2018. So it is definitely a better deal um, if you still have this phone and you're experiencing slow performance, you might want to consider replacing your battery and you can keep it for longer. Um, otherwise, if you're buying this phone new, I'm not sure if they're still making it. They were as of a couple months ago, but I'm not sure if they're still making it anymore. They discontinued it from Apple in September of 2016 with the release of the iPhone 7, but they continued to sell it in prepaid markets and things like that. For $199. I don't know if they're doing that anymore. I think they kind of replaced it with the 6S um, as their budget end smartphone. But this one is relatively new. It was built in July of 2018 and it was purchased in November of 2018. So it has a new battery, you know, everything is fast, kind of. Um, yeah. You can see just how it's not terrible but you are going to be missing some of the performance that you get on newer iPhones. Now battery life in general if you have a new battery is okay. Um, I would say I mean I don't use this phone a whole lot so I get like five days between charges but um, I would say let's just look at some of the battery results here you know it's at three percent right now so um, that doesn't really help us, does it? An hour and 18 minutes in the last 24 hours. Of course, Apple doesn't show you time since the last charge anymore. But yeah, basically, I would say you can probably get, you know, three, four hours of use with a new battery, mixed use. Um, so yeah, but it's definitely not as good as any subsequent iPhones. And the camera also is an 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p video and the front camera is 1.2 megapixels only and with 720p video. Um, you don't get live photos and you don't get the retina flash on the front but it is a decent camera for how old the phone is. Um, you know it's pictures come out surprisingly good so I'm actually pretty happy with the camera on this phone. So you can see that the iPhone 6 has held up better than other phones of its age. However, if you are in the market for a used iPhone, I would strongly recommend that you pick up an iPhone 6s if you have the money. It is definitely worth the extra, you know, $30, $40, um, because the difference in performance from the iPhone 6 to the 6s is pretty much the biggest difference in the iPhone lineup. There has yet to be a new iPhone that's really been able to improve on the performance of the iPhone 6s. It's been just very marginal, you know, from the 6s to the 7, 7 to the 8, and so on. Um, so you're pretty much getting the most updated performance out of the 6s. So I would highly recommend that one if you are looking for a used iPhone for a decent price. However, if you are on a very tight budget or you're picking this up as a second phone or something, it is still a great option. So that is the iPhone 6 in 2019. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.